Hello and welcome to Western Perspective. I'm Nelson Liu. Thanks for joining us. Tonight, it's a situation described as a complete overreach by WA's ethnic communities' representatives, three Indian tourists detained for five days by the Australian Border Force. The men included their wives on visas, but the women didn't travel, resulting in cancelled visas and 110 hours of detention. But the men were released, the situation described as a jurisdictional error. I spoke to Ethnic Communities Council President Suresh Rajan, who says the tourists have been left traumatised and stereotyped. To a person who actually lives in this country and has been here for about uh, 12 or 14 years, I think he's lived here. Biju has three children and the youngest of the children was having her Holy Communion at the end of last year. Then decided, the father then decided that what he'd do is he'd bring out some members of the family. Hadn't seen the members of the family for about um, uh, seven or eight years and he thought it would be a good opportunity to bring them all together for a celebration of her Holy Communion. Three members of his family lived overseas, um, uh, two of them in the Middle East and one in India. They, they decided with their wives to come out here. Somewhere along the line uh, the wives decided that they weren't coming for various reasons. One person didn't get a visa so they decided that all three of the wives would stay home but the three men would come out here. Uh, when they arrived here, the Border Force people took them aside. They then placed these three men in three separate rooms in the detention area and interviewed each of them separately. And the interviews went for each went for about eight hours. So there, for eight hours, they were grilling them around issues of, you know, why they were here, why their wives were not here. And they came to the conclusion, basically, that the, the men had lied on their visa applications by indicating that their wives were coming. So the Border Force people then, then came down to the open area of the uh, waiting area of the airport and started to grill my friend who was, who was just downstairs there. The, the three men had breached the visa, condition, uh, visa applications uh, by lying and they then cancelled all three visas and put them into the detention area and asked uh, and indicated that they were going to be deported on the Thursday, uh, sorry, on the Wednesday of that week. So this happened on the Sunday, on the Thursday, on the Wednesday they were going to be deported. Um, ABF, uh, the Border Force people, then rang my friend and indicated that um, they had made a jurisdictional error, and they were now going to release all three people back to his care, and he could uh, come and take them home. So the exercise was a total waste of taxpayer money, absolutely shattered. They will never ever come here again. They will never ever recommend to anyone that they come here. The three men themselves are absolutely petrified. So they will remain scared for a long time yet. How do the families feel about what's happened? Say that do not comment on individual cases uh, because it's private and we understand that but they've also said that they uh, query whether or not there is, they, they said there was no racism involved in what they did. Um, I would question that because I really don't think that they would have applied these same rules to people who were not of this colour and this uh, ethnicity. Has Australian Border Force come out and made any comments about it? I think the Border Force people sh uh, should have overreached to the extent they did. There was nothing there that they could have um, gone and asked for that had already be, uh, that had not already been provided and therefore you cannot look at this as being reasonable action under any circumstances. So you don't believe that this is just Australian Border Force doing their job that there was a level of stereotyping involved? It'll take a bit of time for them to come out of the shell. They will get to a point where they will hold that party that they were going to have on behalf of the uh, uh, of the, the child with the Holy Communion that was held last year. So what's the situation now for the three men and their families? Take a couple more weeks before they get to the stage where they will get comfortable enough to know that hopefully this is a one-off and it's not going to happen again. And now, here's AMA WA spokesman Dr Andrew Miller with his weekly COVID-19 update and commentary. Hi, thanks you, Tom. It's important uh, to understand that uh, even though the Governments are keen for us to move on from COVID. August was still uh, the, the month uh, with the most number of deaths uh, in Australia since the start of the pandemic. And we've now seen a, a death toll of over 14,400 uh, people, unfortunately. 
a lot of those, of course, in aged care and uh, it's very tough times um, for a lot of the elderly in our community who are seeing that the rest of us are moving on uh, and therefore leaving them pretty vulnerable to uh, severe outcomes in a, in a relative sense, even though the vaccines have been very good. Uh, there's still some waning of those now and, of course, the variants have moved on. We're likely to uh, see another uh, wave going into uh, the end of the year and we're now looking at variants around the world to see where that might come from. And given that uh, we are now very well connected to the rest of the world with international travel, lack of masks, or obviously no quarantine and so on, uh, it's likely that we will see that arise uh, in Australia fairly quickly once it gets established overseas. So we need to remain on guard and uh, be prepared to uh, mask when we're in indoor locations in public, which is something that I continue to do just out of habit and don't find it a uh, particularly um, difficult thing to do and it protects not just me but my elderly mother who lives with me and uh, also if I were to have uh, some sort of infection it will protect uh, the people in the community around me when I wear it. Uh, so we also can look to the uh, report of the Australian Bureau of Statistics recently who look at the rates of uh, mortality in the country and what they're being caused by and we're seeing a contribution of COVID to an uptick of about 10 to 15 percent in things like heart attack, stroke, dementia, all of which are known complications of uh, COVID disease or uh, certainly exacerbated and worsened uh, by having had COVID infections. So those trends will uh, continue and we'll keep an eye on them and hope for a vaccine for our under five population. Still waiting on that. Very frustrating that we have not yet got the supply to roll it out and, and protect those kids so that the first time they get infected, hopefully it will be with some vaccine on board. And uh, then we need to get updated vaccine. The bivalent vaccine has been approved, which is the one that uh, acts against two of the different variants of COVID. So uh, although the... Uh, media have moved on, the government have moved on to a large degree uh, in th and uh, even picking up little comments here and there from the World Health Organisation that we're within sight of the finish line. They're missing out the second half of the sentence from the WHO, which is that you can't stop running until you finish the race. And speaking of which, um, I hear that uh, Nelson's going to be leaving WAMN News. Always have enjoyed uh, every chance uh, that I have to have been uh, interviewed by Nelson. I think he's made a great contribution and I wish him all the best with his future career and I wish all of you out there uh, a very safe week. Chat to you soon. Thank you, Doctor. And here's Leo Puglisi with what's coming up on 6 News tonight. Thank you, Tim. On 6 News, Queen Elizabeth II's funeral fast approaches as mourners continue to pay tribute to the late monarch. We speak to a young monarchist and we claim that having kings and queens is too old-fashioned and that Australia's youth is moving away from the monarchy. Plus, over in WA, the National Centre of State retain the seat of North West Central and remain the state's official opposition as the Western Australia Party fails to make much of an impact despite running two candidates. And the stage is set. Full out continues after the Swans' now biting victory over Collingwood in the AFL, now set to take on Geelong in the grand final. You can see full details on those stories and plenty more by heading to our YouTube channel. Just search 6 News Australia to find us or head to our website, 6newsau.com. Congrats, Nelson, as well, on a great innings there at WAMN. For now, though, guys, it is back to you. Before we go tonight, I have some personal news to share myself. For the past seven years, WAMN News has been my home here in the media industry, where I've brought you the latest in news and current affairs, both home and abroad. But in keeping in with WAMN News' policy of bringing you breaking stories, I bring you an exclusive. I'm leaving for different pastures. I've been thrilled to bring you the local stories on our Sunday evening news bulletin, Western Perspective, and on our website. I may be telling you the stories, but they're your stories, and WAMN News is your platform. Now's the time to pass the baton on to other young journalists to give them their shot at doing what WAMN News does best. This is not the end. We will meet again. I'm sure you'll hear my voice on the airwaves, read my words and thoughts in reports and opinions. You may even see me on your screens once more, maybe even on WAMN News. But please continue to support WAMN News by joining the extra subscription service to bring the stories that are important to you and support independent local journalism. Ivan, I appreciate the time that we've worked together in the past seven years. We've covered many stories together, many of which have made the station what it is. You've made me a better reporter, and I know I'll miss getting out on the road as part of the team and covering another budget and yet another state election. 
Also, Melly, take the reins and keep doing good work. I know you'll do well. You've hit it right on the head there, buddy. It's important to subscribe so we can train the younger reporters like yourselves. You know, after more than 2,800 articles, three federal elections, two state elections, six state budgets, several bushfires, and the pandemic, mate, you've done it all. Thanks so much for your hard work, Nelson, over the years. And thank you in particular for mentoring me as I learn more and more about news. Now, I know the next two minutes won't do it. Yeah, it won't do you any justice because there's just so much appearance and there's so many of them, we just can't squeeze them all in. But we've mined the archives and here's a tribute to you since your first on-camera appearance back in 2015. Ivan, the Liberal Party's Andrew Hasty is the current frontrunner in Canning's by-election, focusing on local issues such as crime, drugs, jobs and infrastructure, with Deputy Prime Minister Julie Bishop's full support. The RSL's president warns Anzac Day could be priced out of the state if services continue to expand rapidly. Graham Edwards has warned Anzac Day ceremonies may need to be cut back following expanding costs for bigger crowds and ceremonies in WA each year. Leader Mark McGowan reaches the pinnacle of his political career by becoming the Premier after winning the state election. WAMN News is out in full force on election night. I love this place. It's done more for me than I can ever repay. After eight years and two terms in government, Colin Barnett has initiated projects and policies that have seen the state grow and become his legacy as WA Premier. Uh, the one I made to myself was that I would give it my best shot. I have always believed in miracles. Yeah! Scott Morrison says it's right back to work following the win, but it's also success for other Liberal members around the nation. Hello, Nelson Liu with today's news headlines. WA Greens have called on Parliament to declare a climate emergency, with a motion to be debated next month. Currently, Wuhan remains in lockdown to prevent the spread of the virus. We can confirm that at least six Chinese Western Australians, including children, are stuck in Hubei province, with three in the provincial capital, Wuhan. As we will continue to get more confirmed cases, it will happen every day. But we as a state will get through this. Made of fabric, they look like a regular surgical mask. All it needs is an adequate filter in between. Parents who advocate for making yourself masks say they do it to keep their kids safe. But the question is, do these masks actually work? Meanwhile, doctors are stressing personal hygiene, urging people to wash their hands properly. WA President Dr Andrew Miller has a say, uncut, unfiltered. And that I just want us all to take a minute, step back, put it all in context. To have the support and faith of so many Western Australians in one of the most important state elections is a, is a, is a great honour. It's a crushing win like no other in WA state politics. Kirk have conceded defeat in the state election, confirming predictions that he could not beat Mark McGowan. The damage to homes and lives is rising in Perth's northeast as properties are ravaged in an ongoing bushfire in Wurraloo. Perth has managed to reach this home and has left a trail of destruction. A beautiful home turned into a pile of rubble. This is one of the properties burnt out in the blaze. While firefighters have prevented more extensive damage to the homes, it's uncertain that there could be more. He has a new Prime Minister with Anthony Albanese leading Labour to form a majority government for the first time in more than a decade. The battle for the electorate of Curtin has been on a knife's edge, but now it's about to be decided. Independent candidate Kate Cheney has secured the previously safe Liberal Party seat, beating the incumbent holder Celia Hammond. Both Kay Cheney and Celia Hammond have been neck and neck during this election campaign, according to pre-election polls. Nelson, what can I say? Seven years with Ivan. You're moving on. You probably deserve a medal. Good luck. Well, Nelson, you've been an integral part of WAMN News for a very long time, but we're very excited and pleased to welcome you to the WAMN Alumni Club. We wouldn't be the same without you. We're keen to have you. Let's catch up soon. Nelson, congrats on a great innings there at WA, man. Obviously, many networks and news outlets seem to be abandoning WA with current affairs journalism, but the work you've been doing there at WA, MN News, and on Western Perspective, of course, has been fantastic. Good luck with wherever you go next. Nelson Lewis has been a familiar face on WA, MN News for the past seven years. He's built up his credibility, uh, experience, and uh, he's known for his authoritative reports. So, Nelson, all the very best. What a remarkable seven years it has been. 
It's been an honor to work with you, buddy. And on behalf of the viewers, we thank you for your hard work over the years. The final sign-off is yours. I'm Nelson Liu, and for the final time, Ivan and Melly, it's back to you. Thank you very much, Nelson. And that's our weekly news and current affairs. We have the latest news on our website, wamnnews.com.au. Don't forget to subscribe to the WAMN Extra News Club so we can continue our work in the community and train younger reporters such as Nelson. Full details on wamnnews.com.au forward slash news forward slash extra. From Melly and myself, we wish you good health, good night. See you next Sunday. Thanks for watching.